Welcome to uh, what I actually think is a very important lesson, and it's the lesson all about dealing with balanced hands, especially balanced hands as the opener. I like to call these the bread and the butter hands because uh, back in my early days of playing bridge as a, as a junior player, we had a, 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 the world's best coach. His name was Eric Kokish. And uh, Eric uh, said that uh, there's enough tough problems at the bridge table without getting the easy ones wrong. So uh, that's why I suggest that the balanced hands are very much the bread and butter hands. They're the ones that we have to understand the system, what we do on every single one of these hands and how we approach what the rebid is and how many points that rebid is showing. So first of all, let's look at the balance shapes. The balance shapes are the obvious four, triple three, four, four, three, two, and five, three, three, two. Now, why that's important, everyone, is that uh, the five, three, three, two is because uh, that will come up when it comes to opening one no trump. I'll discuss that in a second. Uh, the whole idea of opening one no trump with a five card major, I think it, it is, a, to me, it's essential. It's not something you may or may not do. It's something you should always do. Now, let's look at, first of all, these balanced hands uh, and even car, uh, suits with two small cards. And as you can see here, this XX here in, in, in a suit, two small cards, that means that's good enough for a hand even to open one no trump. Don't be caught up with not having an honor in every suit. So, let's move along. Let's first of all talk about the opening hands in the 12 to 14 high card point range. Uh, the way that you show that type of hand is you simply open one of your suit. In this instance, it's the five card heart suit. And a partner, whatever level partner responds at, and now we're talking about not raises, of course. When partner raises you, that completely changes the structure of the auction because that fit is defined. But when it comes to partner changing the suit, whatever suit partner uh, responds at or whatever level they respond at, that's the level of no trumps that you rebid. So you open a heart, partner bids a spade, and you on this hand would rebid one no trump. If partner instead had responded two clubs, you, you on the other hand would rebid two no trump. And on, in both of these situations, this promises the minimum point range. Now, let's look at opening a no trump. And I want to spend quite a little bit of time on this area of, of when we do open one no trump with our 15 to 17 high card points. Now, I know we've got a few New Zealand uh, viewers, etc., and some people over there in the UK. Uh, you may open one no trump, obviously, on 12 to 14. So essentially, what you're doing with those two point ranges is simply switching them. Let's look at, um, for the purpose of this lesson, let's look at 15 to 17 high card points. And let's look at the most controversial thing. The most controversial thing is not the small doubleton. You should always consider opening one no trump even with a small doubleton. But the thing I really want you to grasp is the idea that when you've got a five card major, you have no uh, rebid if partner uh, uh, calls one spade on this hand, for instance. So let's look at that and let's see what would happen if uh, partner did over your one heart rebid, if partner did respond one spade. If you bid one no trump, we already know that's 12 to 14. If you jump to two no trump, we also know that that is the hand with 18 to 19 high card points. So we'll get that to that in a second. So with hands such as the one that we've got here in the example, this hand right here, if you open a, a heart and partner bids a spade, what do you rebid? Yeah. None of you, no bids that you make actually satisfactorily describe the hand. So the best thing for you to do is open a hand such as this with one no trump. Yep. Now, some of you are probably saying, but that may mean we, 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 we could miss our five, three major suit fit. That is possible on some hands that are part score hands. On some hands where we have part score hands and partner has somewhere between, let's say, six to, uh, let's say, seven, six or seven points only, because with eight or more, partner may very well invite over one no trump. So we're talking about hands where we've got between six and seven points. Partner might have a raise to two hearts, and you could perhaps miss a superior contract. But the overwhelming advantage of opening one no trump on these hands is that you get a million of options available. Now, let's talk about some of those options. 
Let's say partner opposite your one no trump bid. Let's say partner's hand is something like this. Uh, jack to uh, six spades. Yep. And not much else. Yep. A couple of small cards. Yep. All of this, et cetera, et cetera. So the advantage of opening a no trump is that partner will be able to respond on that hand. Partner will be able to do what? Partner will be able to transfer. That's a big plus. You would take the transfer and partner then says pass. Consider the option though, if you partner didn't open a no trump on this, if partner actually opened one heart, what would happen? After one heart opening bid, then you would be forced to do what? Pass. See, there's lots of hidden advantages in opening a one no trump with a five card major. Now, people are probably going to ask me, but what happens on the game going hands when it comes to try to, trying to find those five three fits. Well, have a look down here and we're going to look at, again, we've got a few examples of the case for opening uh, one no trump with a five card major and that is here. We've got this hand here, so that's got 16 high card points. If you open a heart on this hand and here partner respond one spade, your rebid of one no trump would be 12 to 14 and a rebid of two no trump 18 to uh, let's say 19. We'll change that to 19 there, everyone. Um, and let's have a look, keep going down here. Uh, again, if you open this hand with one heart and partner responds one no trump. Now this is, this is an excellent example of why you should be opening one no trump on these hands. Uh, you've got 16 high card points. You open a heart, partner responds one no trump. Now, game is a possibility. However, it's a stretch. Partner's point range is, you know, six to nine, but partner will, you'll probably only be able to make game if partner is up at the maximum level. So most of the time, partner won't have a maximum. Most of the time, partner will have something around six or seven points. In fact, the more points, the higher you go up, the less likely is the number of points. So, but you don't want to give up on the chance of game. You'd probably find that most of us would open a heart, uh, not open a heart, if, we, if you're not a one no trump opener. If you did open a heart, then partner responds one no trump, and you'd probably invite to two no trump on this hand. Partner more often than not will have a minimum and pass. And now you're sitting in a contract of two no trump, trying to take eight tricks, when you really want to be playing in one no trump and uh, scoring up your contract most of the time and grabbing that over trick uh, when it's on, on offer. But when you're in two no trump, the over, it's not an over trick to get eight tricks, it's actually a requirement to get eight tricks to make your contract. So by not opening one no trump on hand such as this, you're placing pressure upon your partnership when it comes to invitational options to game. So I can hear people already thinking, well, if partner's going to open a no trump with a five card major, what do I do in respect to finding out about things such as five three fits? So here's my suggestion to you. If you've got a hand that's interested in game and partner opens one no trump, as long as you've got at least, let's say, nine points with a three card major, you should be using uh, what I'd like to refer to as five card stamen. Now, you don't have to incorporate these options, everyone. I'll give people a, a simpler option after we finish this. But five card stamen is actually quite a straightforward, um, uh, uh, straightforward convention. So in this example, you open a no trump and partner says, do you have a five card major? Not a four card major, but a five card major. And the responses are as follows. Two diamonds says, sorry, this, should, this is a misprint, everyone. Can you change that there? Those max and that min, those two should be switched there. So I will fix up those notes for people and send them through. Here, the actual response here should be, there we are at the bottom of the screen. Two diamonds says no five card major and a minimum, that's correct. Two hearts, two spades says five card major, that should be minimum, everyone. I'll switch those notes and improve them later. Uh, two no trump says no five card major maximum. So that means that the two lowest bids are minimums and the two highest bids are both maximums. So two no trump says no five card major maximum and three hearts and three spades say I do have a five card major and I am maximum. Well, how does, that, how does it continue after that if you're looking for a five three fit? 
Well, if partners' bids are either two diamonds or two no trump, both of them denying a five card major, so let's look at that. And let's say the auction has gone one, one no trump, two clubs. If partner bids two diamonds, yeah, no five, yep. Or partner bids two no trump, both of them, no five, yep, no five, yeah. The next bid from the uh, responder of three clubs is now stamen at the four level, yep. So if three clubs are stamen at the four level, then you would respond as you would normally to a two club stamen. So you would bid your major, or you would bid three diamonds if you don't have a four card major. So something that you're actually uh, used to, here we go, three diamonds in response to three clubs would say no, and three hearts and three spades would say yes. Okay, so that, that's the way it works. I'll just uh, tidy that up a bit again for us everyone so you can see how it works. Again here, one no trump, uh, two clubs says, do you have a five card major? Two diamonds, two, and two no trump both say no. So the responder bids three clubs saying, do you have a four card major? Three diamonds here says no. Yep, three hearts, three spades say yes. Actually quite a good convention. That means that three clubs act as four card statement after partner has denied a five card major. But once partner shows you a five card major, you know where you stand. And the beautiful thing also about this convention is that you can actually show a minimum or a maximum hand, minimum or a maximum hand, which is quite important because if you do show a minimum hand here without a five card major, I'll go back to this one, no trump, two clubs. This is a minimum hand, two diamonds with no five card major. I might change the level to a smaller level. Okay. Now, any bid here, two hearts or two spades or two no trump, all of these bids are non-forcing. Each one of them says, partner, I know your minimum and I'm no longer interested in game. Okay, Anita's asked me a question. If minimum is 15 and maximum is 17, what about 16? Very good question. Thanks, Anita. I always suggest that there's many ways to uh, evaluate balanced hands. One of my favorite ways of evaluating balanced hands is something that uh, Ron Klinger uh, introduced me to uh, at least 10 years ago, maybe a bit more than that, called the Bonsai Point Count. And I will actually give you a lesson coming up uh, in the next few weeks about uh, upgrading and downgrading hands. And one of those subjects in the upgrading and downgrading of hands is all about the balanced hands. Now, the Bonsai Point Count uh, takes into effect things such as tens, yep, things such as uh, five card suits. So I'll say this to you, Anita, if you've got 16 with a 10 or two, or you've got 16 and a five card suit, then treat that as a maximum. Terry's asking about transfers. What about transfers? Well, this is a beautiful thing. If you incorporate hands with five card majors into, uh, into your one no trump opening, then there's many hands that the responder can now bid on because they can actually use transfers and transfers don't require any high card points. Now, if people would, if anyone would like me to send them notes on the full structure of using a uh, five card stamen over a one no trump opening, uh, please simply send me a message and I'll forward you the full structure of, of the notes that uh, we play. And once you get a, a handle on it, it's really lovely. Now, I'll also show you a simple version of uh, what to do uh, if you don't wish to play minimums and maximums. Now, this isn't perfect by any stretch of the, the imagination, but it is a decent method. And that is, if you, if you play, uh, uh, not, if you play, uh, don't want to play minimums and maximums, but you do want to be able to show whether you've got a five card or a, or a four card major, make simple responses. Now, this is an alternate method, everyone. You can't play both the method that I'm suggesting and also the alternate method, but the simple alternate method is this. Two diamonds says, partner, I have no 
four or five, not even a four. Two hearts, two spades, say, I've got a four. Three hearts, three spades, say, I've got a five. Yep. Quite a nice, simple, easy method for those who don't want to be loaded up with uh, system constraints. Not perfect, not as good as the other method, but quite an easy one or an easy one to remember that is. So that would be a very simple version for people who are interested in playing uh, five card stamen, but don't want to have all of the minimums and maximums involved. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on to the hands where you've got 18 to 19 high card points. All of these hands are hands where you have to be able to jump in no trumps at your second bid. So looking at this hand in question here, the example example right here, you've got 19 high card points, you open a diamond. If partner bids a major, that is one heart or one spade, you would jump, shift, I say shift, as in uh, shift from your suit or their suit into no trumps, you would jump to two no trump here. So uh, I will go back and have a look at that um, five card uh, statement again, or the simple version, because a lot of people are actually just asking me questions here saying, would I explain it again? How about I do explain it again, and then we can move on to this. So going back to the whole idea of uh, an alternate method to uh, the five card major statement that I have in the notes, and that would go like this, one no trump, yeah. This could include a five card major. Two clubs from responder saying, tell me, do you have a four or do you have a five card major? And then the opener simply bids two diamonds, which says no, no four, which means obviously no five as well. Two hearts and two spades. Yep, that says I do have a four. And if you've got both, of course you would bid two hearts. And three hearts and three spades say partner, I've got a five, yeah? Now, if I was to have a choice between uh, opening one no trump with a five card major and uh, choosing not to because the system's too complicated over it, I would simply choose to always open a no trump with a five card major. And then uh, perhaps if you're not keen on the more complex system, just adopt this little system that I've written here. One no trump, two clubs, two diamonds, no four card major, two hearts, two spades, I've got a four card major, three hearts, three spades, I've got a five. Now Ruth's asked me a question here. If you jump to three hearts or three spades, would you need 10 points? Uh, Ruth, define that question a bit more. So you mean jumping to three hearts or three spades over one no trump? Because transfers can still apply. You can still transfer over uh, using all of these notes. Nothing changes with your transfer style. You could still simply bid uh, two hearts here as a transfer to spades, partner bids two spades, and you can then jump to three no trump and give partner a choice. Ruth said, just worry that you might end up in three no trump with less than 25. That is a possibility. But what may be able to, um, and that's why I prefer the full statement, what may happen if you've got uh, less than 25 is you may up, make up with it for it with the extra length. Now, one of the important things about not getting to game with too few values is to uh, address what happens when you are the responder. When do you use stamen or not? Now, my theory is that eight high card points now is not enough unless you hold a five card suit of your own or you hold several extra tens. Yep. Now, for me, most invitations should start uh, on balanced hands with nine high card points. So that's just a, it's just a, a thought. It's, it's a much better idea to invite heavily than uh, always uh, jump the shark. Yes, so essentially eight high card points for the responder opposite 15 to 17 is normally not good enough to invite. Most of those hands you should pass one no trump with the exception of if you're the responder and you have eight high card points with a five card suit. So let's just rub that out. Let's now move on to the hands with 18, 19 balanced. Here we go. 18, 19 high card points balanced. Uh, most of us are, use, are used to these hands. Uh, 
most of us are used to these hands because we remember that the jump involves the extra high card points. That is the, the space between one no trump and two no trump opening bids. Now, if you open a diamond on this hand and partner bids one of a major, you jump to two no trump. If partner instead had responded to clubs, don't bid two no trump on this hand because partner will think you've got 12 to 14. How do we remember that? Whatever no trump bid you make, if it's at the same level as partner's response, then it shows a minimum hand. Yeah, in order to show the 18, 19, you have to jump. Yep. So in this instance, we would jump to three no trump. Let's move on. And let's have a look at the area of uh, when you open two no trump with 20 to 22 high card points. The important thing here is that whenever you do have a five card major in 20 to 22 high card points and a balance shape, that is five, three, three, two, or perhaps even, it's even acceptable to open two no trump with a five, four, two, two, uh, and 20 to 22 high card points. I'm not a big believer in opening one no trump with 15 to 17 and a five, two, two shape, but 20 to 22 and a five, two, two shape, I think it is acceptable to open two no trump. And the reason behind that is because if you don't, sometimes partner may pass your one of a suit and you may end up having quite an easy game with 21 points opposite four, especially if you've got a five card suit. So an important system to play over this is something that they refer to as puppet stamen over two no trump. I haven't given you a full complex version of it here in the notes, but what I'll say is this, that again, the three club response to two no trump says partner, do you have a five card major? So this is quite familiar, except partner bids the major if it's five cards at the three level. If they have a four card major, they bid three diamonds. And if they have neither a four or a five card major, they simply bid three no trump. So again, I'll go over that. Three diamonds says, I do have a four card major here, partner, if you're interested. Three hearts, three spades says, you struck gold, I've got a five card major. And three no trump says, no, not tonight, I don't have four or five card major. Now, here's the interesting thing. If you do rebid three diamonds, partner may still be interested in your four card major because they did, however, uh, after all, use stamen. So if the auction uh, went, two no trump, three clubs, and the opener says three diamonds, says partner, I have a four card major. Now, one hand is big, 20 to 22 points. Now, the one thing that uh, you've probably learnt over years of playing bridge is that it's normally a good idea to have hands that are very powerful hidden because the defense can be much easier if the big hand is sitting on the table. So the way that puppet stamen works and what it's designed to do here is that if the responder has a four card major, they bid the other major. Now that could be complicated for some, but it's actually worth it to learn this. And especially with your favorite partners, sit down and say, do you play puppet stamen? Have you heard of it? And this is how it works. Three hearts here says partner. I've got spades. Yep. And three spades here says partner. I've got hearts. Yep. So that way, if your partner here, the opener, has four cards in the major that you're showing, they will bid that at the game level. Now, I won't go into any more extended versions of it, but suffice to say this. Again, you bid the major simply here as the responder that you do not own. You bid the major you do not own. So you bid three hearts uh, if you've got four cards in spades. You bid three spades if you've got four cards in hearts. Yep, nice little system. And again, as I said, it allows the uh, responder, it allows the responder to uh, uh, make sure that the opener is declared if you have a fit. Uh, another question about minor suit transfers. Can you play uh, minor suit transfers over two no trump? Uh, normally not. Uh, I will just give you a little bit of system over two no trump. Over two no trump, three clubs is stamen, five cards stamen. Three diamonds, three hearts. These are both transfers here. Transfers to the major. So major suit transfers. Transfers. And three spades is used to show both minors. Five, four in the minors. Yep. 
That means that if you're the responder and you have one long minor, the way that you show it is by simply responding in that minor. And yes, that also means that you will become the declarer if that minor becomes the trump suit. Now, you would rarely bid a minor. Uh, you'd probably only do so if you had six cards in that minor or even more. So uh, there, it's a rare occurrence, but that's how you show it. You simply bid your minors naturally. Clubs shows clubs, diamonds shows diamonds. Revolutionary. Okay, let's move on. Okay. Uh, I'm getting better at rubbing out. I'm getting quicker. Practice, practice, practice. Okay, 23, 24 high card points. Here you should open two clubs, as in the game force, the strongest bid, bid and rebid two no trump. So two clubs and rebid two no trump. And that says to partner, you have 23, 24 points and balance. Again, you use five card puppet stamen, the same as we would over two no trump. This method here is not perfect, everyone but the alternate methods are quite complicated. And I'm, I'm not um, convinced that everyone should try the alternate method unless you are a real uh, system wonk. Now, that brings me to a subject. I would really love to have a, a day where we have uh, uh, a day where we learn uh, lots of system, meaning system that's not, when I say lots of system, uh, meaning uh, conventions, that uh, everyday players don't normally play. I'm not talking completely out there, but um, I want readers or listeners to let me know if you would like that, if there's enough people who'd like that on the odd day here or there. 25 to 27 high card points, two clubs and then jump rebid to two no trump. The reason I'm not uh, completely keen on this idea, even though it's simple, is that sometimes we miss out on our four, four major suit fits. Okay. Let's look at uh, responding here. Uh, when open to rebids, one no trump or two no trump following a, a one of a suit opening or a one of major response. They will normally have uh, two or three cards in the responder's major. So what do we mean by that? We mean that if an auction has gone uh, one diamond, one heart, one no trump. Now the opener here, won't have four cards in hearts, but they almost certainly will have two or three cards in hearts. What if the responder sitting over here, yeah, has a five card heart suit? And it turns out you've actually got a five, three fit. And that's where a little system comes in called two clubs check back. And two club check back over a one no trump response says this to partner, it says partner, I, I have uh, five cards normally in my major. Sometimes you could simply, the responder could simply have four cards in hearts and four cards in spades. But I think it's, it's better to use it as saying, I've got five cards in my major and I have an invitational plus hand. So the way that uh, rebids work after this, or the way that the system works is that we treat two clubs as a purely artificial bid. So let's say one diamond, one heart, one no trump, two clubs, bingo, check back. Yep, and that is forcing. And it says I've got at least 11 plus high card points. And it says, tell me more about your hand. Now partner simply uh, says, uh, or shows their features as they go up the line. So any bit at the two level, two diamonds, two hearts, two spades, these would show in turn five cards and diamonds. Here, three cards support for your hearts, or here, four cards and spades. Now all of those bids, because they're at the two level, all show a minimum hand. That's what, uh, and minimum being within the range of 12 to 14. And let's look, look at what would happen if uh, the opener had a maximum hand, because remember the two club check back bid said, partner, I've got a hand that's at least uh, uh, inviting to game. Uh, Terry's asked a quick question about, still confused about when to use transfers or five cards. I mean, you can actually use both, Terry. You can always use both. 
uh, the the situation you may be confused about is when you're the responder and you have five cards in one major and three in the other. But when I deliver the uh, uh, more complicated version of the five card statement notes to people, then it will actually cover cover that in the notes. So let's go back to the check back here. In the check back here, again, if the opener bid three diamonds or three hearts or three spades, they would also be saying exactly the same thing. Five, four, three, but this time they are maximum. So that means they are going to game. Now I've left out one bid here, and that is two no trump. So uh, a bit of two no trump here by the opener would be also a minimum with none of the above. So it means perhaps what the opener's done here is they have uh, opened one diamond with four four in the minors. Yes. So essentially, that's how uh, checkback works. And checkback is a really good system. It's something that uh, everyone should take on board. And something also to remember is that it doesn't matter if partner's initial opening bid was one diamond or it was one club. Two clubs is still check back. Yep. So don't think that you can suddenly now show six to nine points and four cards and clubs. You can't do that. So if you want to play check back um, over one club, uh, then uh, the two club bid here uh, would, uh, would not be natural. It's still actually check back. So let's rub all that out. Okay, let's put, take those notes away for a second. Again, I've got a couple of examples there where you can uh, use uh, check back. Uh, this one here. Uh, this example here, where uh, you open one heart and partner responds. Oh, pa pardon me, you respond one heart uh, to partner's one diamond and uh, partner rebids one no trump. Now I'm actually interested to see if partner's got three cards and hearts. So I bid two clubs on this particular hand. I'll just write it up here. Uh, one diamond, one heart, one no trump, two clubs. If partner has uh, three cards and hearts, they'll show it. And then I would raise to four hearts. If partner doesn't have uh, three cards and hearts, in fact, uh, if they're simply showing their options up the line, they might bid two diamonds here. You can now bid two hearts, and that would promise five cards in the suit. But maybe you can't do that because uh, that would be a non-forcing bid. So what you would do instead would be you would jump to three hearts. Yes, and that shows now a hand good enough for game with five cards and hearts, and you're after a partner's three card support. So Tony's asked the question, so two diamonds denies a three card heart suit? No. Actually, not if you got, uh, it depends on the type of, of, of check back that you want to play. I think that it's quite reasonable to play two diamonds if you've opened one diamond to show five cards in that suit. And the partnership will be able to find out if they've got a fit by simply uh, bidding uh, on over the top of that. Meaning that if the responder has five cards in the major, they'll show it, etc. So, uh, no, you don't, uh, two diamonds. Uh, can show a five card suit. Let's look at this other uh, option here. And this is important. This is one thing I really did want to uh, show you. And that is, if you are the responder again on the second example here, and you've responded one spade, one diamond from partner, one spade, one no trump, you can bid two hearts. And that is completely non-forcing, everyone. So it means if you play check back, any bid that you make at the two level is a non-forcing call. And that would perfectly describe this hand. If I was to rub this out and also use another option of bidding two spades here, that would also be non-forcing. If I was to, uh, and I'm talking about a different example hand, if I was to even bid two diamonds here, and that would also be a non-forcing bid. So any bid at the two level by the responder after a one no trump rebid 
only two clubs is, or two clubs is the only forcing bid. It's the only uh, bid that makes partner call again, and that's referred to as check back. All other bids are natural, non-forcing, and weak. Okay. So there we go, everyone. What I've done now is that I'm going to just simply switch uh, the sharing here and a uh, new share. And I'm going to bring in our screen here. And share the uh, some hands that I made earlier for you. Can everyone see that? Yeah, uh, give me a big thumbs up. We can we can see that. Can someone message me here to say it, it's up? Nita, is that a big thumbs up? Yep, you can see the hand. So let's look at these hands. Now the auction on this particular hand proceeded. I'm not going to give you the east hand just at the moment because I want you to look at this no trump hand like it's a defensive hand. Uh, East opened the bidding with one club. West responded one heart. They bid their four card heart suit rather than the four card diamond suit. North over called one spade, which I think is good bridge because it's a good lead directional bid. And East rebid one no trump promising 12 to 14 points. West raised that to game and South led the two of spades. What do we know about this two of spades? What we know is this, when leading in a suit that partner has bid, you always lead what we refer to as a count card. That is, if you hold two cards in the suit, you lead your highest. If you hold three cards or four cards, you would lead your lowest card. That is the third highest from three, fourth highest from four. So how many cards is South known to hold? Well, South, can't hold a singleton here. They don't hold a doubleton here because the two can't be from a doubleton. So if that's the case, then South must hold three or four cards in spades. And I think the odds are probably the partner will have three because they may have raised your one spade to two spades with four. So how would we defend? This is you. I'm putting in your perspective of the north hand. And this is the dummy you're looking at. Well, the Clara now decided to play, sorry, pardon me, uh, dummies, yeah, seven. I'll get this, I'll get this better. Check play out cards for all four players. There we are. So the Clara played dummies seven. Now, I'll give you the four hands. It's very important on a hand such as this that you keep uh what we call uh communication with your partner you know that in order for the defense to be able to get to your spade suit the ace of spades cannot be played until the third round of the suit so when dummy seven of spades is played you must insert the 10. what's the best play for declarer the best play for declarer here is to duck it to try to stop the communication now north uh has a, a difficult continuation. Many players in this situation may play the ace, but if you do play the ace, what will happen? If you play the ace, then suddenly the Clara will win the king on the third round of the suit. So it's very important now to continue with the queen of spades. The Clara has no choice. If the Clara plays the five, yeah, then that will, uh, the queen will win the trick, the ace will take the king. So the Clara plays the queen, the king, of course. And now, see this? We have the communication. We have the nine of spades communicating with the ace over here. So the Clara, they can take their four club tricks. Let's watch them do that. So low club, jack, ace of clubs. The third club to the queen. Up. South discards a encouraging heart. So whatever that is, if it's low to encourage, let's say it is in this instance, we'll throw the three of hearts. Yeah, Helen asked me a good question, which we can go back. Is it harder if West played the jack of spades on the first round of the suit? Well, uh, let's go have a look at that. Uh, I think we might be able to do that. Go back to the start of the hand at the end. 
the answer is no, because if, if dummy plays the jack of spades, north simply covers with the queen. So in this instance here, uh, south throws away the encouraging three of hearts. Declara eventually has to play a heart, so they do. They play a heart, partner hops on it with the ace, delivers the third spade, across to the ace, and now this hand is on lead to take two more spade tricks. And the Clara uh, takes the rest of the tricks. So they exit the 10 of gloves. King, three, uh, nine, low diamond, Cross to the king, king of hearts. You can see what's going on here, everyone. And then queen of hearts. Okay, eight tricks taken. We've defeated the contract. So let's go back to what would that look like uh, again. Uh, let's have a look. Might be able to go back to the start of the hand. I think we can. We can just go back. There's the start of the hand. If the two was led, if the two of spades was led, and Helen suggested that the jack was played from dummy, North would simply play the queen, and we're in the, exactly the same position. Can you see that? Good. Let's move on. Next hand. Here we go. Uh, on this particular hand, uh, we, the play would, I haven't popped in the auction yet, everyone, so sorry to tell you. So the auction would probably go north dealer, one club from north, pass from east, one diamond from south, pass from west, and a jump to two no trump on the north hand. South closed proceedings with uh, three no trump, and that becomes the final contract. Now. Uh, let's select the, play, the cards. Uh, the four of hearts is... Uh, okay, everyone will have to move on from that hand. I'm sorry, I've, I didn't put the bidding in, so it meant that the uh, play wasn't possible. So, uh, first time I've used it. Here we go, I did put the bidding on, on, in on this hand. So now we're playing in a contract of three no trump. East open one diamond. West didn't bid two diamonds, they actually bid one no trump, which I think is a better choice, especially because West has nine high card points. And if you've ever got nine high card points and your choices are between raising partner, uh, one of a minor to two of a minor or bidding one no trump, you should choose to bid one no trump because with that many points opposite 12, 21, 22 points for the partnership, there's every chance you'll make that extra trick in no trumps, which will score better at match points. So we're playing in three no trump on this hand. West is our declarer and north leads a, a card. Which card should, would you choose to lead from the north hand? Don't lead the fourth best spade. Lead the top of the interior sequence here, everyone. So you should lead the uh, ten of spades. I'm not allowing you to lead it. Don't quite know why. Okay, let's play, oh, here we go, I have to do that, of course. And now, uh, lead the 10 of spades, there we go. Dummy plays low, south plays low, encouraging, and west ducks it. North continues with another spade, let's say the nine. Dummy plays the seven, south plays the six, and declarer wins the ace. Now, desperate times call for desperate measures, everyone. You know that if the opponents get in, they'll take a bunch of spade tricks. So how many tricks do we have? We've got one spade, we've got five diamonds is six, and the ace king of hearts is seven. So I think the best thing that we can do here is simply run our diamonds. Let's do that and see if we can put the opposition under, under um, pressure. Low diamond to the 10 and three. Dummy keeps cashing diamonds. 
And this is the important part for defense here, everyone. You must communicate with partner in such a way that you say to partner, partner, this suit I have covered. So if your discards are such that uh, some people play high to encourage, some people play low to encourage, some people play uh, revolving discards, some people play odds and evens, some people play McKenny, blah, blah, blah. There's lots and lots of things out there. If you're new to this, uh, I'm going to choose to select or uh, 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 make a suggestion where you would choose to either play high in courage or low in courage in the suit that you were playing. And the last hand we played low to encourage. So I'm going to throw the two of clubs, says to partner, partner, I like clubs. Well, for partner, that's good news because it means they can keep all their spades and they can protect the queen of hearts. So we're going to do that. West keeps playing diamonds and North can now throw away the clubs because you've got them covered. Queen of diamonds now. Again, you've still got the clubs covered. North throws away a club. Jack of diamonds. Again, throw away a club. Dummy throws a club and North throws away their last club. Now, from here, Declarer can play the Ace of Hearts and the King of Hearts, but no Queen drops. So at this point in time, if they play a club, South wins the Ace, North throws away one of their winners, South plays the Queen of Spades, Cross to the king, eight of spades, and the queen of hearts. And that leads to the Clara going again, one down in their contract. Now, there was an interesting end position there where the Clara may have been able to succeed, but they also ran the risk of going uh, two tricks down in their contract as well. So. Um, uh, that there was a possible hand where they where uh, the Clara could have done better or end position. So let's look at the last hand here. Here we go. This is a hand where we're going to show how uh, check back works. North is dealer and opens one club. South responds one heart. I wouldn't overcall one spade on this hand uh, vulnerable because if I overcall one spade on this hand vulnerable, a I should have either a better hand or a better spade suit. And uh, the vulnerability, vul versus not, doesn't appeal to me, especially with two beating opponents. So I'm going to be quiet on the west hand. And then uh, north rebids one no trump showing 12 to 14 points in minimum hand. Uh, you've actually got a maximum for that point range. And south wheels out the two club bid here. And the two club bid here is what we referred to in the notes as two club check back. It occurs after the opener has rebid one no trump. And you can even play three clubs check back after the opener has rebid two no trump. So here it's uh, two clubs, which is the most common one over uh, one no trump rebid. And that says partner, I've got at least 11 points. I'm interested in game. Tell me more about your hand. And partner says, well, I've got three card support for your suit partner, three card support. And I've also got a maximum. So I'm not going to, bid at the two level if i bid two hearts here it's a minimum around about 12 points if i bid three hearts it's a good 14 it's 14 or a good 13 so i think this hand is worth it at 14 to bid three hearts south close, closes proceedings with a bit of four hearts so now we're going to play uh four hearts on this hand the five of clubs opening lead now that won't be from the king and the queen everyone so I might even just look at the hand from the Clara's perspective and make a plan. So the five of clubs lead is a low, so it's probably from some sort of length where we're hoping, which means it's an, from an honor. And that means that as long as West has one of the missing club honors, we should over time be able to get ourselves uh, three winning club tricks. So a trick, uh, at trick uh, number one here, I'm going to actually finesse in clubs. East wins the king, and then what does East play next? 
Well, they could return a club, uh, but if they return a club, they're simply helping declare at this point in time. Although it may be a good play because it may threaten a rough for declarer. So let's try that. Let's play a three of clubs. Nine. West withholds the queen. There's no purpose in playing it. And dummy plays the eight. Now, south is on play. Things are looking pretty straightforward now, as long as we can pick up the heart suit. How should we play a heart suit? Yeah, let's look at it again. How should we play this heart suit to maximize the number of tricks we can take? Well, you've heard of eight ever nine never. This is a classic case of eight ever nine never. So we're going to finesse for the queen. We're not gonna play the ace and the king. We're gonna finesse for the queen. Which way should we finesse? Should we finesse this way or should we finesse this way? Well, it depends on uh, what you can pick up. If you finesse this way, that is you play the two of hearts across to the 10, then it means that you can never pick up queen nine to four hearts in the west seat. However, if you play a low heart across to the king and then you run the 10 of hearts from dummy, if this hand holds queen nine to four, the east hand, you can actually pick up all four of the cards. So that's what I'm going to do. I may run the risk of running into a club finesse, but I want to also um, have the chance of picking up against four one trumps. So a trick uh, three here, now I play the two of hearts, West plays the six and I rise with the king. And that's what, this is what we call cash cater. I'm cashing the king to cater for the possibility of a singleton queen. Well, that doesn't happen. So now I'm going to take a finesse, but the best thing to do is lead the 10 through uh, the uh, potential queen. Well, in this instance, because they've got queen nine, they might as well cover. They know if they don't cover that you're going to play the five. So here, let's say they cover with the queen, you win with the ace, and West discards an encouraging spade. Well, that means that now this hand has the nine and the four left, and you've got the jack and the eight sitting over the top of it. You can see that? So we're gonna cross over to dummy, the ace of diamonds, and then we're going to play another heart West plays the four, and now you insert the eight, winning the trick. South plays the jack of hearts, discarding a diamond in dummy, picking up the nine. Now we're in this hand and we can take another club finesse because we know where the queen is. Dummy cash is the ace of clubs, throwing away a losing diamond and then plays a spade. Giving up a trick to the ace, but when West plays the diamond here, we win the king, spade across to the queen, winning the trick, and then we've got a trump for our last winner. That means a total of 11 tricks, everyone. That would be, I think, a pretty good result at match point pairs. Okay, so everyone, there's a lot to consider. There's a lot to consider in that lesson today. Even though I call it the bread and butter of, of, of the type of hands that we play, meaning the balanced hands. If you don't understand the structure involved around the balanced hands, that is, for example, one no trump opening bid, and what you do with all of the balanced hands surrounding that, then uh, you don't have a proper structure to your system. So things to think about. Opening one no trump with a five card major, big tick, everyone. If you want to be able to choose to use stamen over that, you have to rethink what stamen is opposite a one no trump opening now. It could include asking partner for a five card major. So there's times when you are a responder and you would use five card stamen while you're looking at only a three card major yourself. I would never do it if I had a four triple three. Okay, um, Winston's asked a little bit here about, um, uh, about uh, discards. So again, maybe we'll have a lesson about discards next week. I think that's a great idea. We'll do a lesson when I'm putting together the program tomorrow and I'll send it out. One of those lessons will be on discards and defense in general because there's lots of great defensive hands. Everyone, uh, the other things to consider, 
I think it's a good idea to think about something called checkback, checkback after partner rebids one no trump. Uh, and also the last thing I, I mentioned too was puppet stamen over two no trump. Now, remember there was a little error in the notes in relation to the five card stamen. If anyone wants to play that, please, um, I will actually send out uh, uh, the full notes on the uh, stamen opposite a one no trump opener with a five card major. Thank you, everyone. And this will be online to watch a little bit later. Thank you.